First, I want to say um, thank you to everyone who came. Um, when I went, um, the second time that I went to North Carolina, and um, actually got to speak with Steve, um, we talked about this, and that's because I knew there were people who couldn't go to North Carolina and the things that were involved and around that. So we were in agreement that something like this would be beneficial for all of us here to come together and remember her. And as everybody began to get up and say just about her lovingness and her ways. And um, I had to write my thing down because I knew I wasn't going to be able to say it. So I was fortunate and blessed to have been able to visit Erica during her last days. And even though Bittersweet was gifted the opportunity to say not goodbye, but see you later. Although at the time I didn't realize it would be the final words I would speak to her, I am comforted because I know her soul is at peace. As friends, family, and coworkers came and went, they read passages from scripture sang songs, played her favorite music from Fred Hammond to Janet Jackson, prayed and shared many stories and memories. There was shedding of tears, both mournful and those full of joy. There was despair, but there was hope. There was pain and even some anger, but the greatest presence was the presence of God, the peace of God that passed all understanding. In such an emotionally trying time, the Lord in all his infinite wisdom poured out his unfailing love, and for that I give him praise. Often when someone passes from this life, we hear a sermon of how they were loved by all and lived a wonderful life free of sin and turmoil, and now they are looking down on us from heaven, resting in the Father's arms, waiting for the rest of us to join them. There's no way, better way for me to put this, so I'll say it like I know. Like I know Erica would say it. Uh-uh, now you know that ain't right. <laughs> But the word of God cannot lie. And in John the 14th chapter, Jesus said, he would not leave us comfortless. And 1 Corinthians the first chapter reminds us, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Soon after my initial arrival in North Carolina, I was grateful to have some alone time with my friend. And while alone in that hospital room, standing next to her bed, praying that she could hear me, or at the very least feel my presence, I began to open the Bible that laid at her feet. And the first scripture that opened to me was Psalms 121. And the Holy Ghost spoke and told me to read aloud. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which have made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forever. I closed the Bible and I gave thanks to God, but yet my heart was still troubled. And as I continued to hold her hand and cry to the Lord, I heard his voice again. He said, take the word, open again and read. This time it was Luke 7, 41 through 50. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with, that with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. 
Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that said at me with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgives sin also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. That was enough for me. Amen. God had heard my cry for peace. But more important, he had heard her cry for forgiveness. And hallelujah, all praise unto Jesus. He heard and he answered. So as we keep our memories close to our heart of this beautiful soul that was take, that has taken her rest, my final prayer is that you all are as comforted and full of joy as I am. Grateful for the mercy and grace of God that was poured out. And with confidence, we can say that yes, when Jesus calls, she will rise and meet him in the air.